All right, welcome to my second video here regarding this auto management application. Uh, last time I said I wanted to continue on these um, stories or, or requirements here that we have, and um, I thought it might be good to take a look at this next one regarding document and especially regarding um, that for an order we will automatically create an invoice and attach it to this particular order. So in order to make that happen, let's take a look at um, the studio here and we will for this case create a service and um, so let's just take a little look and let's call it like report load service or something and just in a bit I'll show you what this thing should do. So what I would like to have is a mechanism to load a specific report um, by its code. So when we take a look at the running application we see here for the reports you can actually define a system code. This is what we will do. Let's just do it like this or invoice. And with that we have a name that we can reference and with it we would like with this service we would like to be able to load a specific report. So with that you will get an kind of an impression how it feels to load some data from, from uh, a queued application. So in this case it will be a report load report by system code and we give it a string system code. Okay. We go into the implementation class, we can actually uh, make that happen. In order to do so, we have the possibility here to um, use the data manager, which is there to interact with the database. It will keep certain stuff. Um, will, yeah, basically, not only like a JPA entity manager directly load from the database, but also will apply the security constraints and stuff like that. So. Um, with that we can actually do something like this. Um, let's, I will just real quick write it down here. Um, okay, so we have to do it slightly different. Let's, let's take a look actually at how we can normally load data. So when we go into this um, data manager section here, we have something like load which is normally used for set by setting an ID. In this case, we want to have a query and therefore we should actually use something like that. So I'll just copy that over here and uh, use my report entity. Okay, and then we will do something like that. So when we go into this report, Last here we will see the correct name to fetch. Let's just have another look on how the attribute actually is named. And I think it is this one. So it means the dot code is code and this is our uh, this will be our parameter and we can actually take a look at the views XML and we will find this reports view XML here and we should 
probably take something like this, I would say. Those are the default different mechanisms or uh, definitions of how we want to load a, red, uh, a view. And in this case, yeah, so when we um, create a query, we are um, able to have the possibility to load different or multiple reports. In this case, we only want the first one, so this means that we have, say, something like Let's do something like that. It's not super cool, but a proper hack for now. And with that, we have basically the mechanism available to load a report by a given system code. So then we can go into our order, order edit screen. And if we go to the UI, we can actually, look at that, create a button called create invoice this will be in the corresponding action and we'll create an action here with the name or this id and we will say it should invoke a method in the controller called generate invoice we can additionally do a caption okay so this looks good We can go to our order edit once again. So first of all, we need to inject um, the report load service. This one that we just created. And when we generate the invoice, we can do the following. Load record by system code, and here we give the system code we previously defined, in this case, order underscore invoice. And we will say it's the invoice report. Okay. Now that we have the record, we can actually use the API. So I will just inject another bean here, which is called the report service. Uh, it's this one here. And this report service has a method create and save report. And this is the one that we actually want to use. So first of all, we need the report and this is the invoice report. And then we have the params and then we have the file name. Okay, let's just let's just create the corresponding parameters here. We can inject uh, params in object or hash map and with that we should get a result this is the actually the file that is already processed as the the document and let's call it something like that um okay and with that we actually have the file but we need to attach it to our um, to our uh, documents. When we take a look, we have this document tab with its table, and there we have this documents data source. It's just uh, from this editor uh, nested data source for the documents. So this means that we can actually once again check that just like that. And we can at the end call something like add item. It 
something like that. Obviously, that document does not exist currently. So we need to create a document call and attach the file descriptor as uh, the file attribute here. Okay, in order to do that, we have to enter two other beans. The first one is called metadata. Metadata is responsible for creating instances of objects and stuff like that. And let's see. Okay, I think we even just have to use this one and not create another dependency. Um, let's see. Okay, so first of all, we want to set um, the file. And this is our invoice file here. And the next thing is that we want to set the name. Let's just take the file name in this case. And we can also set the type. In this case, we can just use the invoice item. And with that, we have a proper document. And we will just add it to this document data source. And I think we are already ready to go. Let's have a look. Um, since we created uh, the service, we need to restart the application. Okay, so applications are running, and when we go to the orders, um, screen, in particular the edit screen of the order. Um, let's take this one here, which has already some line items. Oh, actually, it bothers me somehow that we don't have the proper columns here. So let's just real quick uh, change that one or just add them additionally. So we have this line items here, and we can say we want to have the quantity and we want to have the price and the product actually will be in between. Okay, so now we actually see the data. The data is already loaded because we set the corresponding view, but I just wanted to display that. Okay, back to our actual topic. So we have this button generate invoice and when we click it, we can actually turn on the debugger and set a breakpoint just here, and we will just step through the code. Unfortunately, there is a. Let's do something like that. I will just remove this one because we have the same file name here, and we will just yeah, just remove both. And once again, go here, say, okay, we have no documents attached there. Now let's create an invoice. So the first thing um, at our breakpoint is um, the point where we want to load the uh, report by system code. And we will just step over that and take a look at what the invoice report is. So we have a proper name, we have the code, everything seems to be fine. Then we have um, the map, and we will now call create and save report. So let's see if that works. No, it does not work. So let's just go ahead and see what the output is. Okay, so the output is that the required report parameter entity is not found. When we take a look at um, this report here, and um, we have parameter, parameters defined through this wizard. And the first one is this entity here. This is basically the same thing as if you go here, call the run button, and now this is the parameters that you have to give into this report. And this one we did not 
inject properly. So let's just do that. Um, it goes into this params. I think it's like that. And the item is, since we are in the order edit, we can just say get item. And with that, we get a, an order back, and this is under the key entity. And probably this is already enough. So let's just once again open the editor. As you see, we have code live reloading for um, front end code. And so with that, we should once again go into the debugger and see if it works. Okay. Not just came back. Won't well, take quite a, a lot of time, but I think it has to be the fact with the debugger thing. Nevertheless, we it seems everything worked out. We have an invoice file here, um, which is my file docx whatever. So let's just see. We create the document. Oh, I think yeah, we can just run it because there is a problem. I think it actually correctly created this entry here, which is fine. But if we store it, it says we can store it because we haven't set um, the order in this document. Okay, don't save. Let's just real quick change that. Actually, we just I just forgot. Set order is get item. So with this back reference, everything should be set up correctly. And just give it another try. The document is gone because we didn't we didn't saved it. Um, and I will just remove all breakpoints here and just wait. So the file is there. We can save it. Um, we can go into this thing here and actually take a look. Just open up the file. We would see we should see our proper um, our proper invoice, and it is already stored in this entity here. Okay, with so that I think we've covered this exact requirement. Just so here we go. Yeah, we can automatically attach invoices and generate them on the fly and um, just store it for a given order. And with that, I would like to close this video for now and I will get back to you um, regarding the next requirements. Thanks for watching. Bye.